Hey guys, this is part three of the David Icke interview. Now, as the interview progresses, I'm sure there's more and more things that you'll disagree with. And if you do, that's fine. Just leave your comments in the comments section below and try not to come up with baseless accusations. If you think he's crazy on things or if you think he's off base or off point, just substantiate that claim and let's just talk about it because there's a lot of things that I listen to from people all over the world that I disagree with, but there's some tidbits of information that they put out there that's absolutely ironclad. So uh, let's talk about this stuff. Enjoy the video. Let me ask you, in your view, is it is it fair to say and to boil this all down where um, if you say that uh, the narcissistic, murderous, lying, psychopathic politicians, they're not really the problem. It's the mentality of this group of people that has allowed themselves to be manipulated by this very small group of people. And if we can change their minds, if we can change their perspective and their philosophy, they won't even give heed to this small group of psychopaths. Is it fair to say that? Yeah, well, if, if you look at um, look at Bush and Obama, given Obama's still in at the moment. Um, during the Bush administration, you um, quite clearly had a group, um, not, not even much of it, even in the background, on public display, a lot of it, which were called the neocons or neoconservatives. They were the people behind the uh, Project for the New American Century document, which uh, um, said we want this to happen, and they came to power with the Bush administration, and what happened? It happened. And it's continuing to happen under Obama. Referring to 9-11 there. Yeah, exactly. Referring to 9-11 on the PNAC document, is that true? Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm referring to 9-11, to um, uh, where they said in this document to um, justify and get basically public support for all these regime chain wars, uh, change wars that we want. We need a new Pearl Harbor. And, of course, nine months after they came to power, one year to the month after that document was published, um, they had their new Pearl Harbor, indeed what Bush called the Pearl Harbor of the 21st century. Um, and a as a result of that, they've been uh, able to justify a so-called war on terror, which is actually just a war of terror, and to um, go into these list of countries that that document um, contained. But the neocons have an equivalent in the Democratic Party, which I call the Democons. It includes people like Big New Brzezinski, etc. The Clintons are in there, George Soros, these sort of people. And they are the neocon um, um, organizers and handlers of the president in the Democratic Party. The key thing is that if you go to the next level, or the next depth of this structure, the neocons and the democons answer to the same master, the same force. Thus, whoever's in power, be it a Democrat president or a Republican president, that force is always in power. And it's that force that's driving the agenda. And that's why for all the record-breaking number of times that Obama used the word change in the run-up to um, the, 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 his first election. Uh, he's just been business as usual. And um, it's that, uh, that force, that, those, that network behind the two parties, same happens in Britain, um, that people need to focus upon because they're quite happy with people fighting over whether it will be this puppet or that puppet, because that focus means that people are actually accepting that if they vote for that puppet as opposed to that puppet, puppet the, the outcome will be different. Once you realize this other network controlling both exists and what its agenda is, suddenly you realize it doesn't matter which one you vote for because the agenda of the hidden hand is always going to be played out through the president. And so Trump appears to be uh, a renegade of this system, a spanner being thrown in the works. And, and what this is doing is attracting a lot of people um, that think, hey, this is a way for a different politics that's outside this 
control system politics that we've become used to and have become, you know, uh, the, the uh, normalcy. Many people the, know. the normalcy Sorry? that you had alluded to earlier. It's their it's their way to break yeah. out of their normalcy. Yes, to a new to a new version of the normal. Because um, there's no way that Trump 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 actually, funnily enough, is a classic politician in the sense that he'll say something for effect, and then at some point he'll say something else. And, and when you look at some of the statements he's made over the years about his own wealth, his own uh, background, his own business prowess, what he owns, and et cetera, and people who've done the research into the background have found so much of what he's claimed, even, even in, in relation to his own life, his own business uh, background, has turned out to be fundamentally untrue. So if someone's going to do that in those subjects, oh, is he going to tell the truth when um, he's trying to attract um, support for political office? Of course not. He's going to say what he thinks will uh, be most effective to attract the kind of constituency that he's looking for, just as um, Barack Obama said a, a, a lot just as actually, funnily enough, um, Hillary Clinton is now, to um, attract um, the black vote and the Hispanic vote. But then you look at his eight years. Has Obama uh, helped the lives of, of black people? No, not, not overwhelmingly, because... Um, the people who control him couldn't give a damn about black people. They couldn't give a damn that, that, that Barack Obama is black. That, to them, is just a vehicle for um, selling uh, um, the show, if you like, and keeping people interested. They couldn't give a damn. You know, by their actions, shall ye know them. If... Um, Barack Obama had spent the last eight years changing things for the benefit of uh, black people and the black poor and the white poor and the Hispanic poor, etc., etc., and those um, who have been crushed by the system. If he had been trying to um, support middle class, as you, uh, the, the version of middle class you have in America is slightly different to our middle class here, but um, the, the middle class of America, whether it's white, black, Hispanic, whatever, then you'd hold your hand up and say, hey, you know, you, 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 you're doing the, what you said you'd do. But he hasn't, because this is the process. I mentioned it earlier. During the election campaign, you um, tell people, particularly the people that you, whose votes were going to get you in, you tell them what they want to hear. They vote for you. Then you do what was going to happen all along, which is invariably not what you told people that they wanted to hear. I think it's very sad. I have to say, and I, sad is the word, that I'm seeing that um, uh, so much of black America is supporting Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton could not give a damn about those people. But because she's trying to get the Democratic vote, she has to tell them what they want to hear to get their support, to get in office, to then do not as she likes, but as those behind her like. And I would call Hillary Clinton evil, except that I would expect to be sued for defamation of character by evil. I've been tracking this lady and her background now for 25 years. This lady should be in jail um, and the key thrown mid-Atlantic. Instead, she is running for office and is very possibly, very possibly going to be the next president of the United States if she can keep at bay all that there is to come out about her. Now, th let's think about that. We have someone 
who is so monumentally pure, undiluted evil for what she's done over decades, who, while the Clintons, including her husband, were so-called fighting the Bushes and the other party, the Republicans, they've always been close friends, business associates, and uh, fellow drug runners in places like the MENA scandal and in uh, Arkansas, when the Clintons were, Bill Clinton was um, uh, governor and she was big in the biggest law firm that was so corrupt it's breathtaking. You look at all the background of Clinton, you look at all the stuff with the Benghazi emails, all the lies, and yet she is not in jail, yet, we can always hope. She is not on trial, ditto. She's running for president with a very good chance of victory. Now, you tell me, people, that a system that is so stitched up that a criminal of her global historic magnitude can be running for president instead of um, running around the exercise yard in a top security prison, and yet, and yet, that same system would allow Donald Trump to get this far um, if, it was un if he was unacceptable to that system. Not in, my, not, not in my reality. That's all I can say. Not in my reality. Um, let me just change kind of the tenor of this, but kind of stay on the thing that you were talking about as far as elections. In 2008 and 2012, there was a guy who ran for the presidency named Ron Paul. Um, now, I had personally met Ron Paul yeah. and had a couple of discussions with him. Um, he was he was operating under the Republican platform, but he was clearly a libertarian who was coming out against the Federal Reserve and all the government indiscretions. As a matter of fact, he had a little placard on his desk in Congress that said, "Do not don't steal. The government hates competition." So he was always putting a spotlight on government. What's your take on Ron Paul? Well, how do you feel about him and 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 what his ideology was? Well, um, you look at Ron Paul, who was coming from more the Republican uh, perspective, and you look at Bernie Sanders, who's coming from more the Democrat perspective. And in many ways, they, they, they're similar in this way. They are saying things that um, are demonstrably true about the banking system, about the inequity of the system, about the corruption of the system. And on that level, you know, round of applause. But of course, um, there are other things that they say. I mean, Bernie Sanders buys the global warming uh, lie and and uh, what have you. And th th there are there are things that I, uh, about uh, both that I would disagree with. But at least they were highlighting, in terms of Bernie Sanders, is highlighting um, some things that uh, are, like I say, are demonstrably true. And and Sanders has stood up and and said some good things over the years since the um, economic uh, crash of two thousand and eight with regard to the banks, with regard to corporations and the extraordinary uh, uh, small levels of tax, if any, that they pay when the, the the struggling people have to have to pay taxation or or they get prosecuted. Um, but of course. Anyone who is saying anything that is exposing the system in any way, and both of them are in their various ways, um, is not going to be allowed to get anywhere near office. You know, I mean, uh, I, um, if I had to choose between um, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, I'd take Bernie Sanders. Um, because um, he's saying far more things that I agree with in terms of the banking system and uh, inequity of wealth distribution um, than, than Clinton would ever do because she represents absolutely everything that uh, is um, expressing itself through the banks, through the corporations and so on. So yeah, I, 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 I applaud uh, both of them for the things that they've said um, to try to expose the system. Um, but um, of course the system doesn't let them get near to office to 
implement any of it, even the bits I agree with, especially the bits I agree with. Guys, thank you so much for watching my video. There are more parts to this David Icke interview, and I do end up getting around to asking him about reptilian people and their moon base. So don't worry, I don't let him off the hook that easy. If you enjoyed this video, please share it on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you want to see more videos like this, just click that big red subscribe button down there. And as soon as I upload a video, you'll be one of the first to see it. If you want to follow me on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash high impact flicks. On Twitter, at high impact flicks. And now on Instagram, at high impact flicks. You guys have a great day.